All right, so let's move on and, and talk about uh, a different disease biology uh, with EGFR mutated lung cancer. Um, EGFR muta mutations are anywhere from 15 to 40 percent of our patients, depending on the clinical phenotype, I think. Mm. Uh, we know these mutations predict sensitivity to first and second generation TKIs, whether lotinib, gefitinib, um, or fatinib have all outperformed chemotherapy in the front line uh, for EGFR mutated lung cancer. But we've got Yet again, some practice altering data that has emerged over the past five or six months that is gonna change our calculus and the way we approach this disease. Uh, Suresh, you've been intimately involved and led many of these efforts uh, with osimertinib. You wanna to talk to us, walk us through the, the flora data and the clinical implica implications of that? Sure, so the flora results were just published in the New England Journal of Medicine recently this study was done to con compare osimertinib to the standard first generation TKIs, or lotinib and gefitinib, in the frontline therapy. We all know that osimertinib is already approved in the second line acquired resistance setting for patients with T790 mutation. What's unique about osimertinib is it's a mutation selective inhibitor. It has a very high uh, effect on mutant receptor compared to a wild type receptor, so the toxicity tends to be less. It also has better CNS penetration compared to the first and se second generation drugs. And uh, more importantly, it blocks not only exon 19 and 21, but also the major resistance mechanism in T790M, which is how patients escape uh, in nearly 50 to 60% of the instances when treated with erlotinib or gefitinib. So based on all of these lines of evidence, FLORA was conducted, phase three trial, head-to-head uh, -head comparison of osimertinib 80 milligrams per day versus either erlotinib or gefitinib. Uh, uh, bo both arms had placebo controls and uh, close to 550 patients were enrolled in the trial. It was a global study. Uh, the PFS was the primary endpoint and what we showed was the median PFS was 18.9 months with osimertinib compared to 10.2 months with the TKIs. And the hazard ratio was 0 0.46. The duration of response was almost twofold higher eight months for the control group versus 17 months for patients treated with osimertinib. We also saw a promising survival trend, even though this data are not mature, with a hazard ratio of 0.63 for overall survival. Now the statistical significance is not there yet, but uh, our hope is that with continued follow-up and maturity, we'll see that. We also saw protection of the brain for patients treated with osimertinib in the frontline setting. The hazard ratio, with osimertinib in patients with CNS metastases at baseline versus those who did not have was very similar at 1.46. Uh, of course, safety was also more favorable with osimertinib. So the study showed superiority for PFS for osimertinib compared to the other agents in a very statistically significant manner. It showed better brain effect and had less uh, side effects. And now it's uh, in the NCCN guidelines for frontline therapy, and at some point I anticipate it'll get FDA approval. So I think these data do lead to a new standard of care okay. in the frontline setting uh, based on these things. And to the clinician who says, and I've heard this before uh, recently uh, in a second opinion, well, I, I want to start with the first generation TKI because I know I can use osimertinib second if they have the T790M. Uh, I think people feel like using osimertinib up front, they don't know what to do, and we'll talk about what potentially you can do after osimertinib. But, your answer to that and, and sort of... Sure, we, we've looked at all the randomized trials done with first and second generation TKIs versus chemo in the frontline setting. And if you follow those patients to see how many of them actually get a second line therapy, it doesn't have to be TKI, that's somewhere in the order of 55 to 75%. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's a drop off of 30 to 40% of the patients right there who don't see another line of therapy. Now you add on top of that only half the patients will develop T790. So if you use the wait until later right. approach, you might lose the opportunity to treat two thirds of your patients. Right. Yeah. And I think it's hard for me to make the case to my patient that I have a drug that has a median PFS of 19 months, but I'm gonna give you a drug which has a lesser efficacy so that when things get worse, I have a backup plan. Uh, that's just a hard and argument much, for me to make. And much Look, less toxic. Yeah, yeah, less yeah, less toxic. Absolutely. Yeah. Look, it's the flu season now, to, <laughs> and you come in with a bad flu. Do they say, well, I'll save the, I'll save the time of flu to later and try something else now? <laughs> no. <laughs> you, you use your best, uh, your best antiviral right away. And sure. I think that's the case here. Um, that said, we, we do have to figure out what to do 
as these patients are living longer and then they become refractory. But I think this drug is less toxic, more efficacious, works in the brain a little bit better. Uh, one should use it.